So, uh, many, as I said, many scientists are reluctant to come to this conclusion, and, and the reluctance is greater in some disciplines than in other disciplines. But a scientist uh, has an obligation to follow the data wherever it leads, uh, regardless of the philosophical implications. If the data seem to be pointing over there, that's where we go. If the data seem to be going over there, let's follow it over there. And I think that although people seem reluctant to embrace a theory of intelligent design and biology now, that progress of science will make that more or less uh, a forced choice in a few years. It, the, the, uh, the apparent design in biology is, just becomes more and more overwhelming with the, with the progress we make. So I'd like to thank you very much for your, your attention, and I will answer any questions. First question. Hi. I'd like to ask you to uh, respond to three brief points. Uh, the first is, I think your concept of irreducible complexity uh, doesn't take into account one of the major points of the evolutionists, which is that the component of a complex system uh, has not necessarily and probably has not, in fact, always served the same function that it serves in that complex system. So that the system doesn't have to have been created de novo. It could have been the result of small changes from many different directions that then were able to come together in terms of a more complex system. Uh, the second uh, uh, point is that the fact that scientists are not currently able to explain complex systems, which they may or may not be able to be in the future, uh, to me is certainly not an, an argument in favor of creation by God, for which there is even uh, less empirical explanation. And the final point is that if you accept the um, argument by design, uh, that does seem to beg the question of who designed the designer. Okay, uh, you may have to help me. My memory isn't so good. <laughs> Three points is probably two more than I can remember. But the first one is that uh, perhaps the components of the system were borrowed from other systems uh, and were not uh, produced de novo. Yeah, that's a good point, and that's, that's essentially what uh, a Darwinian is really um, must say in the presence of irreducibly complex systems. And I should point out that irreducibly complex systems cannot be produced directly by uh, an accumulation of parts. But perhaps they can be produced indirectly. For example, suppose the, the mouse trap was first a doorstop and then used for something else and something else and turned into a, a mouse trap. <laughs> well, uh, that's okay, and one cannot rule that out because there's essentially an infinite number of you know, pathways that one could potentially think up. Uh, but one problem is that along these different pathways, the parts somehow have to have been uh, suspiciously adapted for their final use. For example, uh, suppose you look at the uh, mousetrap and say, well, it contains a spring. Well, my grandfather clock over here contains a spring as well. So let's just take that out and use that. But the spring in the grandfather clock is not the right shape, not the right length, not the right tension. <laughs> and so on and so forth, and you're back to the problem of still kind of pre-adapting or, or somehow uh, molding the components into the correct shape to fit into the, in the new system. And uh, again, uh, I think that the onus would be on the person who uh, proposes that such uh, in a circuitous route occurred to come up with an example of such a circuitous route and, and adduce some evidence for it. And if you look in the literature, that, that has rarely, if ever, been attempted. And the, the second point, I'm sorry, was? Um, the fact that scientists cannot come up with an explanation, to me, doesn't argue okay. in favor of God having been the explanation, for which there's even less evidence. Sure. Science never proves anything. It's always kind of a preponderance of the evidence uh, kind of uh, situation. For example, <laughs> suppose in the 1920s, uh, the motion of the stars was discovered, and a physicist said, gee, if you kind of mentally reverse that, maybe all the matter in the universe was concentrated into, into a small space, and maybe the universe started in time in a big explosion. Somebody comes up and says, yeah, but what started that explosion? Something beyond nature? Is that an argument for God? You know, how do we know God could start that explosion? And the, if, and they say, let's, let's not be hasty. Let's work and try to figure out how these red shifts in the starlight uh, might be produced by natural phenomena and still preserve the, uh, the concept of a static, unchanging uh, universe. 
If they did that, they would have been out a lot of uh, good science. Uh, the scientists in the beginning quite rightly said, we don't have to address how the Big Bang started, whether it was God, whether it was uh, you know, a natural event or something like that. All we do is we see this motion of the stars. We know motion implies you know, extrapolated in the past. It was a smaller, in a smaller space, et cetera. I'm saying that uh, these complex systems, irreducibly complex systems, have features in common with design systems that we see in everyday life uh, that, that strongly, you know, they really look designed. Uh, no other explanation has come forward. Well, why don't we think about the fact that they might have been designed and work with that? You know, science can't prove that's the case. Science can't prove that it was God that did it. Science has no way to measure God's activity. It might not have been God. Uh, you know, the fact that these were designed does not tell us who the designer is. It's not a proof of God and is not meant to be. For example, let me, I'm not just trying to be coy, let me, uh, I'd like to cite a paper by Francis Crick, the Nobel laureate, and in 1972, he and Leslie Orgel published a paper in a journal uh, called Icarus, and the title of the paper was Directed Panspermia. And the thrust of the paper was that the problems with imagining an undirected origin of life on Earth are so great that perhaps we should consider the hypothesis that space aliens sent a rocket ship filled with spores to seed, the life, uh, seed life on Earth four billion years ago. And this was not a momentary indiscretion. He's repeated this over the intervening decades a number of times in public. If Francis, <laughs> if Francis Crick wanted to think that the designer of the bacterial flagellum was a space alien, he's welcome to think so, as far as I'm concerned. I cannot point to a biochemical system and say, you know, this is evidence that God was the designer. <coughs> um, many people, most people, will conclude that uh, because of reasons they have for believing in God from, from other areas. Uh, but if somebody is, is, wants to think that the designer was a natural being, and that maybe could be even be investigated by science at a later date, that's okay with me. Uh, so I don't, I, don't think, uh, I don't think science really has to uh, worry about the identity of the designer at this point. And what, what was the third? Whether space aliens are God, the third point I think is the same, is that who designed the designer? The de designer must be that much more complex, and then you can ask the same <coughs> question of that, and you never reach an end to the argument. Yeah, that, that's a good point, and it's, uh, it's, it's a, uh, a question you, you, you know, run into frequently in, in this area. And uh, I guess the answer is that it's not obvious that somebody had to design the designer, even if it was a natural one. Suppose that Francis Crick's space aliens did not consist of irreducibly complex systems. Suppose they were floating clouds of gas or electrical charges or something like that, or something we cannot even imagine, but natural phenomenon. It's, you know, we have no way of knowing that could not occur. Um, and uh, the second question is, you know, I'm no philosopher, I'm not going to argue, you know, the properties of God or anything uh, with anybody. There's probably a number of people more qualified to do that uh, in this room. Uh, another answer is that, well, maybe somebody else did the design the designer, uh, but nonetheless the historical process by which life arose on Earth uh, is interesting in its own right, and still the conclusion of design follows from the design uh, from the structure of the biochemical systems. So you know th these are these are you know certainly they're uh, difficult questions, and all of these proposed answers are you know strike us as as being very very odd. But you know one of them is is certainly true, and and right now I would say the biochemical evidence and evidence from other areas of science as well point to some designer.